Welcome to my new screencast. Finally, I did it. It's been a long time. I simply didn't or I don't have enough time to make uh, more tutorials, but I wanted to continue on my series on MVVM Lite. Um, and today we will cover um, converters uh, a little bit and uh, the messenger pattern. Okay, let's start with converters. And today I'm gonna make it a little bit different. I will uh, show you some code I already uh, have written and we will start up with the main window XAML of our sample project. As you know or you don't know, I don't know, um, you can find all the stuff on GitHub. Uh, please head over to my Coding Freaks article if you want to get the link for this um, or maybe I will put it um, into the YouTube video comment too. So, um, here you can see I reworked uh, my main window a little bit. So, as you can see here, I added a date picker. Let's take a look at this one. So, it's uh, just a simple date picker. I zoom a little bit. I know I forget this all the time. Um, this date picker is bound to the person model birthday property. And um, uh, this one is new also the label which is uh, bound to the age property and as you can see here here is a converter um, uh, which i implemented and the converter is simply a class that implements one interface which is called i value converter let's take a look at this so in my logic ui i added this converter h2 brush converter and as you can see here, it's simply a class and it's implementing this interface, which comes from system windows data, which means it's part of WPF. And this interface um, says, I want you to implement two methods. One is convert and the other one is convert back. As you can see, convert back is not implemented because I decided to implement a converter, which is a one-way converter, which means it gets something in and converts it uh, out to in direction to WPF, to the view, but it's not able to convert it back to the view model side, if you want to. So what is this thing doing? It's uh, stating out that if the value which comes in is null, um, we will just return a new solid color brush with transparent uh, color. So then, if it's not null, we will try to um, parse an int out of this uh, value and if this works we come into here and we just say hey if the value is uh, less than 18 let's return a red color brush and otherwise a, a green color brush. I will come to this class um, uh, in, in a few seconds. So after this we can um, uh, bind to this pro uh, to this H to brush converter because we are saying hey this H property this is just go to this one it is a nullable int in our view model and it's just saying if birthday has a value then just uh, return this total days by you know this weird logic it's not correct but it's sufficient and uh, if there's no value just return nothing so now. So now this we bind to this property, but we want that the background, which is not an int, is bound to this property, but is converted using our converter, which means if there's an int and if it's less than 18, here this one results in a red solid color brush, and otherwise in a green solid color brush, and if there's no value in a transparent solid color brush. So let's try this out first. So we start and here something is going on, you know, from the first samples and here is no color brush on this label. Let's select a date and now he calculates that the age will be zero, which means it's red. And if we just go to another value, it's automatically switching to green color. So let's uh, head over to the brush and just hit a breakpoint here. Let's take a look what happens 
when we change the value. So WPF, the binding, uh, sees, hey, the value has changed, um, the H value has been changed. So now it recalls the converter and the value passed in is 19. But it's an object because the converter is not generic. So now it's not now, now. So it's going in and transform value is 19, which means it will return this one. What we see here is that the converter when we add it to our binding is called all the time and when um, a model is re-evaluated. That means be careful with converters because <coughs> if you overdo uh, the usage of converters, let's say if this person model is uh, uh, inside of a list of 1000 other person models and we bind this against the grid, which we will cover later on in, a, in, a, in another screencast. But if we bind a list of person models with a huge amount of items, then the converter is called for each row, for each item in this list, um, one uh, or again and again, which means it could end up in a very slow perform performance. So if you go back to this class, there are some issues here because first of all, all the time we generate new instances of solid collaborage. That's not good. Uh, that's not good code style because um, in the best case, we should take this color brushes from the resources, um, from a resource dictionary. So that WPF takes care of handling all the stuff and providing us something like singleton. So we don't get a new red brush, but every time the same red brush. This um, would be better in uh, terms of memory consumption. Another thing to mention is that if you take a look at this converter, it says it's, it comes out of a static resource. So what is this? A static resource means that somewhere in our code, um, in the main view XAML or in the app XAML, in the resources here, there has to be a resource defined with this key. So let's take a look. We go up here and you see here, here are the window resources, which means variables like member variables that are defined inside this window. It's all, they are only available to this window. So a good point would be to take this H2 brush converter, take him out here, out of the window and put him into the resource dictionary of uh, our app XAML. So let's import the type. Just a second. Let's go here to the namespace so that the app XAML gets the namespace too. Uh, hey man, please. He's not accepting enter here. That's cool. Just try it again. Maybe now. Yeah converters um, and now he takes the converter out of our other project and um, provides it under this key to the complete view project which means um, now it is where is it converter converter it's coming out of the app resources which is better just test it out if it works just to be sure <coughs> Yes, it works. So now we just can use this converter in all our views because it's part of the app XAML. So um, another thing to mention is um, that this dialog, which is uh, useful for binding, let's say here, we will go to the properties window, which is here, and we go over to the background and you see here, it is a data binding. And here at this position, you can say, hey, I want to bind against the H property, which is a nullable int, and I want to use a converter. So if you don't know the syntax uh, exactly here, how to implement a converter, you can do it in this window and it will automatically um, uh, wire up everything for you. You just have to remember to put it into the right place, like app XAML um, afterwards. And if you have another converter and you go in this window, 
He will take a look in all the referenced assemblies and will show you all the converters available to you. So these are the converters we defined in our projects and this uh, are the, or these are the converters which are available uh, in all referenced assemblies currently. So, by the way, we can get rid of this uh, other converter and we can just remove all the window resources. So, cool. Okay, this is what I wanted to show about converters. In the blog post, uh, there is uh, more to read about this. It's written in German as it is always, but the source code is um, written in C sharp, which is not German. Okay, converters. Now let's take a look uh, to another issue. It's um, all about uh, the messenger uh, pattern. So what is the messenger pattern? Let's um, take a look at the main window again. Let's take a look at this button. This button is supposed to open up a new window when we click on it. It's wired up already, so I want to show you the problem first. So this new window is this chat window, which I implemented. It's very simple, very straightforward. It's just a window, which is uh, bound to another view model here uh, using the locator. And um, here is a binding because this chat view model has a message from parent. Let's take a look at this class. Here it is, a child view model, simple as that, and it's just having a message from parent, that's all. So now, uh, the problem is, when we take a look, or just think about this, this is the window, and this uh, show child command is bound to um, a command, and relay command in its view model, in the Windows view model. So let's take a look at this, here it is. And it's a relay command coming from MVVM Lite and it's saying, hey, I'm an open chat command. So now the problem is this class, the main view model, is part of the UI logic, which means it is the view model side. Now we can't just say in this command, hey, man, open up this window because we don't have a reference going from this project to this project to the UI desktop and we don't want to have such a reference because it would break the whole paradigm of MVVM. So what should we do now? Because we want the logic be here in the open child command and we want the open child command to open something from here, the child window. We want to open it, this thing. And this thing, when it opens up, it will get its child view model when it opens. And this is the direction we want. So now we have a problem. So what to do now? One way could be to break the paradigm and just double click this one and put it in here and do something like, you know, new child window, point open, no, show dialog. So we, we don't want this because now we have code behind and we don't want to have code behind because that's why we use MVVM Lite for certain reasons. Okay, so what what is the next possibility? Let's get rid of it. The next uh, possible solution is to use a third party in this whole conversation between the view model and this view. And this kind of third party um, uh, thing is called a messenger. Um, it is um, a technique or a pattern which is sometimes in other uh, contexts it is called a service bus or something like that. So what does that mean? So a service bus, I just want to take a look if I, yeah, I have this image here. Let's take a look. A service bus is nothing more than some sort of, you know, thing, memory, or uh, on the network or whatever, which transports messages. This is a German word for message. <laughs> yeah. So. What we can do is we can um, put a certain amount of uh, participants on this uh, service pass and we can do something like publish subscribe. So a system A, whatever it is, can push a certain kind of message to the service bus and this message will start to cycle on this bus if you want to. So there are a lot of messages on this bus. So now 
Another system, let's call it system B, can consume messages from this bus and inspect them. That's what's shown here. So what we this service bus, the only thing we have to keep in mind that both systems should use or have to use the same service bus, the same instance of service bus, in order to make this system work. There are different implementations and uh, you know big service buses are called enterprise service bus because they can store these messages for security reasons and can do something like um, you know, ensure delivery so they can uh, raise conditions when this system isn't aware or whatever. We don't need this complicated stuff. We don't need, we just need something which sits between our system A, which, which is our view model, and our system B, which is our view. And we want the view model to be able to put messages on this bus so that the system B gets informed. That view, that service bus in MVVM Lite is called a messenger. So let's take a look at the main view model. Here's the open chart command on, and now here on the top you can see how you can implement this. The open chart command is a new relay command and we just say, okay, there's no second part in this um, constructor, which means this command is, um, um, you know, uh, or um, executable all the time. And when it gets executed, it's just saying, hey, messenger instance, it's a property coming from the view model base of MVVM Lite, which means every view model has this property. And this property re returns a singleton instance of the message, uh, this service bus, the, the messenger. It's always the same. MVVM Lite takes care um, that this messenger instance is always the same instance in memory. And now we say, hey, send, please, something. So put something to the service bus. And this something is a new class which I have written. Let's take a look at it. It's just, just a simple class, open child with no message. And I just added um, uh, or I made it mutable and said, hey, there's something you can put in if you create a message, some text, and I just can put in text. So that's what I do here. I just send a message. That means uh, from the perspective of the view model, this thing is done. The view model doesn't know what will happen now when somebody consumes this message. Okay, so that's it. Let's go to the view part. We could do following. We could go to the main window to the constructor again to the code behind and doing something like this messenger dot default because we don't have messenger instance here because we are not inside of a view model base of mvvm Lite. but there is a static class messenger from mvvm Lite which says hey messenger dot default which is the same instance that we get from the property out of our view model base and now instead of sending, we are just registering. And we're saying, hey, there is a, an, a certain type of message, an open child window message, which I want to consume. I want to register it to me, to myself. And when it's get called, let's do it in a Lambda. I want to do something with this message. And now we have some text here, some text property, and we could do whatever we want. Let's just debug right line here so that we can uh, con just hit a breakpoint here. So now when I execute this, oh, there's an exception thrown. Oh yeah, it's because I just put the visibility here to the converter. Let's get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. So try again. <clears throat> okay, and I execute this. First of all, the window gets open. Why is that? I didn't show you all the complete story. And debug right line gets called. And we see hello child, which is exactly what main view model has sent. Hello child. So uh, why is this main window coming up? That's because I already implemented it in a better way. Because what means better way? 
as you can see here again we are injecting something in the code behind which we don't want uh, I don't like code behind I just want to be the thing this thing empty and now when we just try it out you can see hey there's coming up this window like we wanted it to come up hey cool <laughs> um, but how does this work where, where obviously there's something on this messenger listening and um, doing uh, this stuff yeah that's right and this something is this message listener here you see the new class so as you can see this message message listener is just registering the same way as i shown as i've shown you before for the open chat window message and is doing something what he's doing is he's creating a new chat window and now after he did this MVVM Lite data context binding comes into place and this child window has a data context which is normally of type object but it isn't an object we know that it is a child view model so we try to convert here this data context into a child view model and if this works if it's not now we just um, setting the property message from parent to the sum text property coming from this messenger message and then we are finally showing the dialog. So let's take a look. Show child and there it is. The message was sent and therefore this instance of the message listener was called. This callback was, um, was executed and now we get this message and in this message we get hello child. Okay, so how does this work? How is this instance message listener wired up? because there is no code obviously as you can see here there's no possibility in WPF project to just wire up this thing um, if we take a look at it again here's some simply simple read-only property bindable property it's called and as you can see here we need this stupid property it's it's doing nothing we just need it for implementing all this stuff and I'll show you how so first of all, let's go to the app demo again. And as you can see here, here is um, a resource which uh, points to message listener, which is our class, and is giving this resource, this variable, if you want to, a key, message listener, the same as a name. We could write something here, doesn't matter. This message listener now is a static resource because it is part of the resources. So now um, there is a static resource, but problem is resources, static resources are initialized only if at least one binding points to a static resource. If you don't um, consume a resource from the perspective of WPF, this resource never gets instantiated. So how do, how do we implement this first binding? We just take the main window because in most WPF applications or Windows applications there is one window and if this window closes the complete application shuts down. In our case this is a main window. So what we did here is uh, we took this property is enabled which is a property of each window in WPF and we just bind this property to bindable property of the static resource message listener. If we just take out this this stupid line, which is um, oh, we have to just take out all this stuff. Well, if you command this out, as you can see, it's not working anymore because there is no instance of message um, listener instantiated. Let's take a look here at the constructor message listener doesn't get called and if we just use the message listener because we bind against one of its properties now at the moment the binding is um, is performed this message listener is constructed and therefore init messenger in the register method gets called so now the child opens up again so, as you can imagine, there are more complex scenarios on, on Messenger because you need it all the time. 
Um, for instance, um, sometimes you need a message listener um, when you don't have uh, certain techniques like event to command, like when you want the, um, the view to inform the view model about something which is not bindable because it's not a dependency property. If you use a lot of third party controls, you just get mad because there, there are non bindable properties, dependency properties all the time. And sometimes you don't, you are not able to use event to command to take a normal event and make a command out of it or stuff like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. Um, so it gets complicated in real projects. And this is not the, the absolute clean way of doing stuff because at least at the least moment we have some sort of logic message listener in our UI desktop namespace. And in the clean paradigm of MVVM, we don't need this. But the practice is you don't can stay clean and deliver business value sometimes. And this is one case I wanted to show you where this is true. So I hope I could show you something uh, which is useful um, for your daily work with MVVM Lite and um, maybe um, it, it makes you uh, more convenient with this technique. Um, next time I uh, try to talk about binding of collections and lists and I hope it was interesting and uh, I say bye.